Hello, everybody. Here we are. We start. Uh, we can start this live. Uh, it's about the double push video. First, uh, I want to make sure the sound is good. Uh, if somebody in the comments can confirm it that the sound is working good, that would be nice. Loud and clear. Okay, cool. Thank you, Siva. So, if you have any questions, so this slide will be. Uh, we're gonna do this for one hour, and uh, so if you have any question about the video about the double push, we start with these topics, and uh, yeah, I'm ready to answer all this. Already, uh, you are 21 persons so far, so it's it's working quite good. Thank you. So I can see, I will try to read the question in the order they will appear in the comment. I remember last time I tried, that was not so easy, but I phone, so maybe uh, it will be easier from the computer. So I can see we have people from India, people from yeah, many countries actually. So, okay, first question is from uh, VFX King. It's not really about double push, but it's the first question. So let's start from it. Is uh, how to it uh, to it mold uh, the boots? Uh, so first, this you have to be careful um, uh, on how you mold it. Uh, so you have to make sure that uh, the carbon you have for your shoes can accept this, and also it's not good to do it so often. So most of the video you can find about it, they will recommend to use an uh, oven. Uh, I actually never use an uh, oven for this. I like to do it with like a, um, something that it's a, it looks like a gun and it makes some uh, warm. I only use this uh, or something to dry the air or something more powerful for when you have to uh, do something in the house. And I do only uh, a heat gun. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> That's a good name. And I just uh, do it locally. So I don't hit the shoes uh, totally in one shot. I just uh, locally correct uh, the point uh, I do uh, on the shoes. And um, I do the point one by one. So, and uh, it's, uh, you have to be careful uh, to, uh, I think it's, for me, it's not good to hit totally the, the shoes many times because at the end it can uh, destroy the shoes. But maybe I will try to do a video about this. Uh, I have a, another question on the topic of today. Uh, maybe, so Dan is asking, how does the uphill course affect the double push technique? So actually uh, the double push technique you use it when it's going, uh, especially higher speed. When you go slower and when you, you go uphill, you can use more and more the classic technique because you are gliding less. So you have more frequency on your uh, legs, but uh, you do, I don't especially do a lot of double push when I go uphill. Also at the moment, because I'm not like in top shape, uh, the more you train, the more you can use the double push in the uphill. But also, uh, if the uphill is going uh, quite heavy uphill, then uh, you can you have to push more backwards. So it's not so so effective. Next question: uh, Is the double push technique the same for long distance skating as it is for short distance and sprinting? Uh, actually, so it's a question from Siva Mas. Uh, only power output is different. Uh, actually, the, the double push technique would be different uh, between sprint and um, long distance. Uh, if it's very short sprint, we actually don't double push so much because then uh, you have two times the body weight transferred. So two times your there is a little moment where you cannot push. When your body weight is just over your foot, it's a moment where you cannot push. So when you double push, you have one little moment here and one little moment like this. So two times in uh, the movement, you lose the opportunity to have a push. So if you go for 100 meters, you always want to have some uh, quick, uh, powerful push. 
So uh, most you will not see many, many, or almost no sprinter for 100 meters use the double push, I think. Um, the double push would be more useful when you go for longer distance. Uh, I start to use it on 500 meters, actually. And if especially you want to use it when you do sprint in a marathon, this would be a very good moment because the straight line can be longer. And 500 meters, uh, it's most of the time on a track. So the turn will destroy the rentability of the double push. But on a marathon, in a long sprint, it would be good to use the double push. Um, uh, yeah, so for long distance, I would mainly use like the body weight technique for double push and the quadriceps technique. And if I want to get like to high speed, and keep it for very long. So if I want to sprint for 800 meters in a marathon, for example, I would use the glutes technique, which is, in my opinion, more powerful. In most of sport, there is cadence, and no one seems to talk about cadence in speed skating. Uh, yes, there is a bit of cadence in speed skating, but it's, we will never speak about it like we will speak in swimming, I think. Uh, when I was at school, my f my uh, exam for the university was about this. And uh, I had uh, the guy for the exams was a swimmer. So he was very uh, interested into the cadence. Uh, it gave me, I had hard times to explain him that uh, the cadence depends especially uh, of the guy in front of you. So you want to, to skate at the same cadence as the one in front of you in a pack, especially. Uh, when you are skating alone, the cadence is also important. Uh, but uh, what is more important would be the ability uh, to create or to keep the pressure. So the cadence means, doesn't mean so much if you don't have a good pressure time uh, on the ground. And this is kind of invisible to see the, the pressure on the ground. So. Um, yeah, the cadence is not like the, the main topics. Uh, also, because, uh, for example, uh, it's not the one who moves the leg the fastest that will go the fastest. So we don't really search for the highest uh, cadence as possible, even in sprint. You really search for the longest pushing time, I would say, in my opinion. Um, anyway, uh, there is something right in searching the right cadence. When you're skating alone or when you're leading the pack, you can see some skaters, they have a different cadence in the technique. And um, so depend also, uh, you will adapt this up to your quality. Some people are very uh, powerful. They want to use a slow cadence and a longer pushing time. Some other people are more dynamic, more uh, uh, or less powerful. And uh, so they want to use a little more cadence in the, um, in the technique. A uh, change in cadence uh, can be useful uh, also when it's going uphill. The more, the harder the uphill will be, the more cadence you want to put in your technique. Okay, thanks for the awesome channel, thank you. How does downhill affect the double push technique? Um, so when you go downhill, it's a little bit like if you have bigger wheels. So you are gliding much more. Uh, you want to use uh, the double push to keep the rolling, in my opinion, in your technique. So when it's going downhill, it's uh, you mainly want to use uh, your body weight transfer as long as you have you reach your highest speed actually. So the more you going downhill, the less you have to push because the downhill is doing the job for you. So you just have to um, you can keep the movement of double push, but you can also delete a little bit of the pressure to save some energy in the downhill. Um, FC is telling it's very difficult to make the hill area more uh, narrow. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure I understand good narrow if you mean uh, wide or narrow. Uh, if the uh, hill pressure is narrow, it's not very a good sign. If you can make the pressure very uh, wide, it's a good sign for skating. So even in double push, I try to make to keep this uh, hill pressure uh, as big as possible. It's not easy to do. Uh, and it depends on, uh, let's say, your um, your um, body construction. Some people have easily the weight in front. Some people have more easily the weight on the back. Uh, I'm a little lucky for this. I, my pressure is easily on my heel, so it's easy for me to keep it uh, the pressure there. 
but um, still it's an advantage when you can keep your pressure on the back. What is the first step to learn double push technique? Um, that's very good and a difficult question. Um, there is one exercise I like to do. Uh, it's one of, uh, I make a video in Korea in uh, last year in uh, Jeonju or in, uh, in, in one of those uh, series. And there is a kind of um, slalom where the cones are like this. So this is the first exercise I do to learn the double push. To get the, the first step to do is to be able to collect some information that your body is telling you, especially how much pressure you generate uh, on your skate and how you coordinate uh, your two legs. So the first step uh, to learn double push for me would be uh, one of those. If you feel you don't have a good coordination, you would focus first on doing the double contact because I think it's, it's an important moment for me. If you do a too long double contact or too short double contact, it doesn't really work, but you have to find the, this right moment uh, to, uh, to make the double push. Uh, one other uh, important point also is um, to be able to transfer your body weight on the outside edge. So if you are not able uh, to transfer your body weight on the outside edge, it's going to be almost impossible to generate a double push. I think there is many questions coming. I'm already lost in there. Now this one I did. And uh, no. first step for double push here. Yeah. So I think first work the ability to transfer the body weight on the outside, make sure uh, you can uh, consider the, where is the pressure on your skates and how long it stays. And then uh, the other one of the little uh, double contact part. Alors, next question. To, how to overtake the guy in front of us? Okay, so it's, it's uh, this little question out of the topic. So I will start, uh, maybe I come back later on this one. In classic technique, can a short push on the standing leg also help to increase power output? I'm not so sure I understand uh, good this question. Uh, anyway, when you do the short push on the standing leg, um, do you mean short push in time or short push in distance? Because uh, for me, it's very different. different. Uh, I like I have short push in distance on the side. I don't like to have a long push. I like to have a short push to stay in the effective part of the push. But I try to have a long push in time. So I try to push long in time in a short area, actually. For me, that's where it's the most effective. So I try to have as many pushing time in this short area. Uh, this is working in the classic technique and in the double push technique. So um, I hope I answer quite correctly this question. It was a little difficult uh, for me, but um, if it was not good, uh, you can ask again later in the, um, in the list. Does the position of the frame affect the double push? Uh, of course, it affects uh, very much the double push. I made a video about how to fix your frame. So if this is your foot, if your frame is open, then uh, it will be very hard to get into the under push. If your frame is a little bit closed, which is what I like, it will help you to go to the under push first and to take the outside edge. So yes, the, the position of the frame is super important. Um, if tomorrow I move my frame and it's not set up good, I have almost no chance uh, to reach the technique I want. Even if I know how to do it, I have, I have no chance if my setting is not good. So the position of the frame is, uh, is very, very important. And you need to spend time on this and make sure you are very happy about this uh, frame position. So you have to try a lot at the beginning. And uh, the more you get expert in this, the easier it's to set up fast your frame. But at the beginning, you really have to search a lot because it can make a uh, big difference. As I say, most important for me is that the frame um, get into a little bit into the inside in the front. So it's easier 
to um, to go on the outside edge and to keep the side uh, push. Which marathon have very good asphalt? <laughs> so I don't see many marathon with bad asphalt, but uh, and and I like when the marathon are a little bit uh, rough anyway. Uh, for me, the marathon in Switzerland probably have the best road, uh, especially in Europe. Uh, every time I race in Switzerland, it was amazing uh, quality for asphalt. So if you're looking for marathons who have a nice road, you should go in Switzerland. And they, in my opinion, they are quite the best there. Hello from Greece. Uh, what would you suggest to switch to low boots? I skate speed skate since one year, and I feel quite comfortable with normal ice shaft skate. Um, I'm not. I don't suggest so much to go on low boots. Uh, going on low boots would be more similar to the ice skating, but you would have the lower will be uh, your boots. The harder it's gonna be uh, to manage the outside and inside edge. And uh, you will probably lose some stability uh, on low boots. And especially for double push, you want to get a very high stability level. Because if your body is uh, fighting for stability, the energy you spend for this, you will not be able to spend it for the quality of the movement or for the quality of the push. So for me, uh, first you have to look for quality for quality of stability, and for this in the shoes, I would always go for uh, quite high shoes and the shoes that are the most stiff. Uh, for me, it's very important. Like if if I have some shoes that are too soft, I, I cannot um, skate good. I cannot go on my uh, I cannot really transfer my body weight on the outside when I have soft boot. So like when I make custom boots, I make sure that they are like super stiff. That I don't want that they are able to move like this. They really don't want anything like this. So most of the time I ask for almost eight to nine uh, pieces of carbon of, on my shoes. Every time I had lower shoes or uh, softer shoes, I couldn't really manage good the body weight transfer, especially on the outside. And I, I'm also losing a lot of my push uh, with a soft or low boots. It feels better. The low boots can give a good feeling to transfer a little bit, but uh, it's, for me, it's very limiting. And uh, I have a problem to use my power when I have a soft or low boots. Um, but it, it can be different also from people. How is your ankle made? Uh, I cannot skate good on low uh, boots because the malleol from my ankle are quite high. So if your malleol are quite low, it's not a problem for you. It, even a low boots will, will work very good. But uh, if you have high malleoles and your shoes are too low, it's going to be very hard because you will spend more energy on the stability than on the right push, in my opinion. Would it be a problem skating using the double push while drafting behind another skater with single push? Uh, actually not, it's not really a problem. It will uh, require that you adapt your timing. It's, it's a very good question. Uh, you have to adapt your timing by this, but you can still double push. Only things you have to do is you will have to push less during the single push and the, the classic push and little less during the double push. So when you are sk skating behind somebody with classic technique, it's a little bit of coordination and you will be able to recover a lot, a lot actually. Especially when it will be in the gliding part, you will be in a double push moment. So it's super effortless for you uh, when you can adapt your technique good. So I, I still use my double push uh, when I'm behind somebody with classic technique. And I would almost do only the double push part. I will almost do the under push and the inside push part and almost nothing in the classic push. Or sometimes you only need to just do the body weight transfer side to side behind uh, a skater who do a classic push. It will still be easier to be behind somebody with double push, but uh, it becomes, it make it like looks like you feel super easy when you skate behind somebody with a with a classic push. Uh, next question, start lesson. Uh, yeah, there are many times people asking for uh, that I make video about starts. I didn't got time uh, to do some about this, but uh, it will be um, 
in the program. And uh, yeah, when I will have time, maybe maybe this summer after the roller games, uh, I will try uh, to do a video about the start. Uh, and, and I need to have uh, somebody to help me for this because I got many problems with my groin muscle. So if I do the start myself, I have a big chance of getting injury. So I will uh, maybe use somebody else to, to help me for this video. Alors, next question, benefit of uphill up training. Um, there, yeah, there. It's it's good for the um, to get more power, more power. It it helps to get the feeling of uh, the pressure. But um, actually, I recommend more to train uh, downhill because um, what's hardest in the skating technique and even when you do double push, it's to be able to find some grip when you are over speed. So this is the difficult part. The faster you go, the harder it will be to generate uh, pressure. So if you train uh, only uphill or mainly with some uphill training, you will get a good feeling for uh, for the pressure. But it will bring your push also more open and more to the to behind. So it's also a risk, a little risk to destroy your technique if you're not aware of this. Uh, and to rebound to this, yeah, I, I like more to train over speed to get used to the high speed than training uh, low, uh, at, in the uphill. The power that uh, you can get training uphill, uh, when you're already a uh, top athlete, it's better to get it in the weightlifting um, than in a training uphill. But I know, for example, many American skaters, they like to train uphill. We see many videos also from uh, Joey training uh, sprint uphill. So it's benef there is a benefit of it, but. Uh, I don't do too much of those. I wasn't doing so much of those. Um, okay. Why don't we see tree skate on indoor competition? Well, actually, um, you can see tree skate in some indoor competition, but uh, it's not allowed in Europe, for example, for the seniors, especially. You see tree skate for the kids. Um, I, I think it. We do, I, I do a bit of uh, indoor on uh, tree skates. Uh, for me, I like it. It's still uh, it's running uh, probably much faster, but I, I have less um, pleasure at the moment to skate indoor on on three wheels. And I lose a little bit the feeling of the pressure on the ground with only three wheels. So I feel more comfortable of four wheels uh, indoor. I don't know how it's exactly in, uh, in US when the floor is super super grippy, but um, like I mean, also the regulation. Uh, doesn't allow in Europe uh, the three wheels for the senior, I think, so, and the higher category. So that's mainly the reason why. Uh, yeah, it's not allowed. Ricardo answer about this. Uh, not enough grip. Yeah, the, I think we can find some wheels that have enough, almost the same grip, but uh, for me, with less pressure, we also get little less grip. Uh, Thanks, Pascal, for the time. My pleasure. I like to do this also. Would you recommend moving your frame when you get to a new track? So um, that's a very important question. Uh, I never move my frame when I go from another track to another. I do my setting and the setting of my frame, and I try to never, never change it. I see many skaters uh, in those days are uh, changing a lot the position of the frame when they go from a track to another. Uh, I never change it because it's very risky for the coordination. The way we skate, for me, it requires it require so much precision in the movement. We are talking about making a perfect movement with a, even less than one millimeter precision in it. As soon as you change your setting, you will change all this uh, correct information your brain built to make this perfect movement. So every time you change your frame, you, you destroy a little bit of all this construction. And for me, it's super risky. So I would recommend to choose a setting, make sure it works good for track and road, and then never change it. Never, never change it. This is, I would not like if my skater changed the frame position. We, we see more and more this, but uh, I'm still not like a big adept of this. Maybe they have good reason, but for me, it, it's a big danger because you destroy all the coordination, the perfect coordination you built 
for the competition. So um, I would not I would not do this actually. How is the dolphin kick with recovery leg helping double push? I'm not sure what you think about the dolphin uh, kick. Uh, I, the, one of the next video I will do uh, for the double push is especially uh, how the uh, recovery leg is working because there is many ways to do it. Uh, you can do it like Joey Montia, you can do it like Bart, you can do it like Felix, or I even do a different movement. So there is three or four way to use the recovery leg. But for me, the, just quick information about this and about this future video. It will come maybe uh, end of July when I will be back from roller game. I will try to do this one also. Uh, for me, the recovery leg is working like if you're um, on the bike, you're pulling and you are doing this with the other leg. I don't know how you call this when you bring the leg up on the bike. And uh, when you use the free leg, the recovery leg is doing this job. If you are doing nothing with this leg at this moment or you are not thinking of it, it's, it's not good. One leg is pushing and the other leg is helping or to counterbalance your body weight or to be active a little bit like a push still. So I, I will make a specific video about this because it's also super important to master the timing during the double push. It's, the timing is super important in double push and the work of the recovery leg is really helping a lot. When using technique with squad, as in your video, how far do you extend your knee? Um, actually, I never extend totally my, my knee uh, when I push. Okay, when you totally extend the leg, at this moment, there is no more uh, muscular action. So I never do a movement when I have the articulation at total extremity. So I always keep a little bit of flexion during all the move, so the muscle they can walk. If the leg is straight, there is no more uh, action of the muscle. So I, I, I never totally extend uh, extend the legs, actually. So I'm most in the comment, it's here. Um, so yeah, in quad or in line, I never totally extend the legs, actually. Uh, is there a chance to send you a non-public message like email or via home page? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, my email is quite simple. It's pascalbriand at yahoo.fr. Uh, and you can always uh, send me emails there. Uh, I, most of the time I answer it. Uh, or you can contact me through um, Facebook or Instagram. Basically, it, it's going to work. I'm quite connected for this and I try to always answer. Uh, best way to tightening up your lace in speed skate. Uh, first, uh, for this, I would recommend to have laces with uh, resin inside. So that's the main tip I can tell you about this. I'm already a specialist about how to lace the skate. I just put it one way and almost never change. But um, I just want to make sure that uh, the laces, they have some kind of glue inside, resin. So. They, are, they don't lose the grip when I skate. Uh, congratulations, I stack slow for ordering your first pair of skate. We want to hear how it feels after a few training. <laughs> Where is Brian? Brian is in the kitchen. Uh, yes, I like to do my video in English. Uh, why in English? Uh, I like to share the information to everybody. I try to put subtitles as much as I can. And uh, basically, uh, yes, there is, just to let you know, there is about 10% of uh, people, of French people following the channel and 90% of uh, foreign people. Still, 10% is a lot and it's most of the people and all the rest is from many different countries. Um, how to improve endurance on skates? Um, Many trainings, so first you have to link the endurance into a technical topic. So you just don't do endurance for doing endurance. Uh, you do endurance and you link this topic with how to save energy with your technique. So it just if you just do endurance without, without thinking of saving energy in your technique, uh, it's not going to work for skating because uh, building just more endurance without the good technique is not uh, is not very efficient in skating. 
So you want to improve your endurance of maintaining a good technique. Basically, this is what you want to do. Uh, this is how I make my training. So when you walk your endurance, uh, most of you just want to control your speed. So you don't want to go too fast. You just want to make to get to a speed that you can still control the movement. So you should almost be able to speak when you skate at those uh, endurance speed. But uh, most of the time you will use your brain as long as you can during this training to focus on some different technical points. Maybe you will do 10 minutes focusing on your position, maybe 10 minutes focusing on the quality of your push, 10 minutes on how you coordinate uh, the two legs, uh, maybe 10 minutes about the pressure, just keep the pressure on the wheel during the side push. Then uh, maybe 10 minutes back again on the aerodynamics. So um, walking on the endurance is just doing, for kids, we would do uh, two times 20 minutes or three times 20 minutes when you're a little older after 15, 16. Or, and when you're senior, you would skate one hour, one hour 15, maybe one hour 30. And this is how you improve your endurance, as long as you make sure you don't go uh, too fast. Next question. Okay, Maleol is Maleolus in English. Thank you. Somebody told me last time already this, but I forgot. Is the purpose of the under push, in my opinion, to push yourself to the side or rather lift your body weight to be able to fall during the main push? It's a little bit of both. The main purpose of the under push for me is to have more pushing moment in the technique. This is the most important. If you're just gliding during your under push, when you glide, like I, like I see in the double pull video, if you glide, your speed is going down. Okay, if you make the under push during this gliding moment, you will maintain your speed at the same. So then when you will do the classic push, you will not have to push stronger to rebuild some speed. You would have to push just enough to maintain the speed again. So at the end, accumulating some pushing moment will help you to make your speed uh, flat. Uh, it's, it's quite hard to explain. I also prepare, I will prepare a video specific about this. It's in my notes. Uh, it was not superly uh, clear explanation when I make the double push video just on this small part. So I will have a special video just about this uh, because it, it's super important to manage this. Uh, so I will still, uh, I like to use still uh, um, the, the, the purpose of the under, of the under push is to maintain my speed by having an inside push. Uh, you can use the body weight fall during this moment. It's also a little bit like a push, like I say in the video. So it's also working, depend uh, how you are working. Like if you are in the back, if there is many draft, you just need to make the fall and a very, maybe a very little push inside to maintain the speed. If you are leading the pack, maybe you have to do a bit of the fall and be active on the double push on the under push to maintain your speed. So you have to play with all this, uh, all these things. Uh, okay, one question, because there is Le Mans race this weekend in France, the 24 hours Le Mans race will be uh, next weekend. Somebody asked number one tips for eight minutes lap in Le Mans. So the skater you want to make uh, eight minutes average in Le Mans. Number one tips would be to find the right group. Okay, you don't want to be alone, especially in a 24 hours race. So I don't know if you race by team or if you race um, alo uh, solo or duo or whatever, but I first things is to be able to, to find a good group. Okay, so sometimes you don't choose this, but uh, average eight minutes, uh, you want to, um, to focus on having the best group of people around you. You have to, to use the other skater actually. So some time you have a group passing you, you have to use them a little bit. And uh, beside this, if you are uh, in a team of 10 or 12, you have to be uh, quite active in the appeal. Make sure uh, you get, uh, I like to make the appeal in a good rhythm. And then I try to relax most of the, um, the lap later and find a good group. So when you're in the appeal, it's very easy to see how far are the group around you, in front of you or behind you. So if they are in front of you, it's good to use the appeal with a good effort to catch them. If they are behind you, you can cruise a little bit and use them uh, later in the lap. 
Are there any fact and how much more efficient, faster the double push is versus the classes, the classic technique? Um, I don't see actually some uh, very specific study about this. Uh, the classic technique is still super efficient, especially in sprint. Okay, and the double push technique will be just more efficient as long as you go in, in let's say a longer sprint. So from from a, a flying sprint from 200 meters and over, uh, the double push is for sure more efficient, uh, in my opinion, because uh, you can maintain your high speed longer because you, the force to use are not like full stop, full stop. When you do this, you will spend your energy much faster than if you can do something like this more often. So you, for me, the double push, uh, is clearly more efficient uh, than the classic techniques, especially when you are speaking about long sprint or uh, long distance uh, skating. Uh, it's a more efficient in terms of economy of movement, but it will uh, be less efficient in terms of uh, mental effort because uh, you will have to sink more during skating, but it makes also the, the skating much more interesting when you have to think more about finding uh, some uh, tricks to spend less energy in skating. Uh, should speed skater lift uh, weight? Uh, not not everybody should do it. I think some uh, some people would be better in training with plyometrics. Um, in my opinion, I like that uh, the skater I train they do weights when. Um, uh, when they are like uh, with big legs, when they already have a good uh, muscle mass, I like them they train more on the weightlifting. If they are more skilly skater, I like more that they train more with a plyometrics uh, program. And uh, but doing uh, weight is uh, there is so many weight, so many way to do weight training. So basically, everybody would need to do some. Uh, in France, we don't start early with weight. We start only around 16 years old and pushing heavy weights later with after 18 or 19 years old and uh, but it for me it was very helpful to uh, do weight training uh, only when i was sure that my technique was good so basically i would not recommend a skater to do weight training if his technique is not good because he will compensate uh, the technique by some power, so it will never start to think more on how to skate. So this is, for me, this is super important. I never start a weight training program with an athlete when I'm not sure 100% that the minimum of his technique is good. So, like, and especially for kids, uh, I would never do a weightlifting, actually. Uh, next question. Um, but yeah, thanks for suggesting Switzerland Marathon. I was in Biel recently. There was one more in Lynch uh, last week, the same weekend as Madrid. There is one more in Mittelland. They are really amazing. Uh, 20 years ago, they were the best marathon in the world. And uh, there is still the races, and they are still a great race. And uh, the race course are most of the time super nice. Uh, flexibility, stretching, and core training. Uh, of course, you need this. I'm really bad in flexibility. I'm really bad in stretching. Uh, I wish I would be better in this. Uh, that's still uh, quite important. Uh, but it's not like a 100% necessity. Like Also, depend how much time you have in your training. Uh, I would focus more on making your technique good. If you have a small amount of time to do in your training, it's better to focus on the technique than focus on flexibility and stretching. Okay. Uh, if your technique is good, if you have extra time, if you need to get a flexible body, or then it will work. for sure it will it will work better. But in, in no case, I think in our sport, a lack of flexibility will uh, stop you to progress. It can it can prevent you from injury. It can help you uh, to get a better skating position. I would say, but we are not doing some extremely. Uh, flexible movement with a super long push. So we don't really need this in our sport. So it's not my main focus. But for core training, that would be uh, super, super important. I mean, we need to move both legs in a different timing and make sure that the upper body still is in control in this. So you want to coordinate your upper body and your legs. 
all at the same time. So that's the work of the core training. So core training would be like in many sports, super important. So you, you have to go for a lot of core training and uh, flexibility and stretching. Like I mean, it's a, it's a bonus training for me. Uh, I would need to progress in flexibility at the moment because at 42 years old, after many years of training, my body get more uh, blocked. So I can, I know at the moment I would need to progress in flexibility to do a better move. Okay, but when I was younger, I didn't have this, this uh, case. Now that I am getting older, I can see my technique get limited by my flexibility. So I don't say you never should do flexibility. But uh, if you have enough flexibility and not enough uh, coordination, you should first work on your coordination. I'm a master skater, and since I stretch a lot, I can get better lowering position. Yeah, so that's exactly what I say. I think as the age is going, we are losing flexibility. And at the moment, uh, that's my case actually since two, three years, my lack of flexibility is is uh, putting some limit for me to get into the right position. So I would be more, I would like to be more aerodynamic, but I'm, my hamstring get little too tight, my lower body uh, back too. So I need to get progress in this to be able to maintain with less energy a good aerodynamic position. What do you think about the new track in Barcelona uh, based on how they build it? I mean, it's cool. It's a, it's going to be a cool experience. Probably noisy. Uh, I think it's gonna work. I hope so. Uh, I think it's, it's it's really great for the sport. I would have liked that it's a bank track, or a parabolic. I would say, or that there is more still more ill if it was just a bank like this. I like when there is more ill in and out of the corner. Uh, otherwise, it's just boring because there is not many passing in our race. So it looks like there is not many ill uh, the entry and out of the corner. So it's a little bit sad, but that's how the track are made at the moment. But uh, still, it's exciting to have a, let's say, portable track. And it's near the sea. It's going to be in a great place. And Barcelona will, will be the place to be. And I'm going there tomorrow. So I'm super excited about it. When I get tired, is it more efficient to keep doing double push, but with less pressure into the ground and to switch into classic technique? Uh, it, for me, it would always be more efficient to keep the double push technique, uh, even when you're tired. Okay. When you're tired, um, you need to keep your technique actually, because it will make you uh, less, not less tired, but you will still be able to perform longer. And when I was doing the marathon in Madrid uh, last Sunday, that's what happened to me. I could feel that I, I was not trained enough to maintain my technique for the race. So uh, as the more uphill I did, the more my technique was getting worse and worse, and that make me even, I will get tired even faster. So I try to focus back on making a good movement and keeping the double push technique as long as I could in this, okay? Because in double push technique, you can use two times your body weight transfer, one time on the outside, one time on the inside. So it's much more efficient than the classic technique for this. Any chance you race in South America next year or end of this year? Uh, I would love to come in South America. Uh, I will be actually uh, not in South America, but in Montreal and maybe in Duluth in September, but in Montreal for sure. Uh, later on, I will be a little bit in India in the first two weeks of October. And then I'd maybe I not have any more holidays left to travel. But if I have a few days more, I uh, will try to go uh, or in China. And if there is some opportunity in South America, I would love to go. It's too long time I didn't went in South America. So if you have any opportunity, let me know. I would love to come and race there. Uh, we still have 15 minutes uh, left for this live. Thank you for all the question. Tobias, how should I think about the upper body movement when applying the main outside push? Should I try to keep my upper body quite straight to resist the push or create to create maximum force? Yes, I think it's better, especially at the beginning, uh, to keep the upper body uh, quite straight as much as you can. And then you see, when you see my video, when you see uh, Joey's video or, or Bart or Felix uh, or Nolan Bediaf, you can see there is some movement. Okay, We try not to have too many movements. And or when we master the good timing, then we create some small movement 
to correct the little mistake within the timing. So for example, sometimes you will see a movement with the shoulders like this. We can use this to perfect the timing of the double push or to correct the quality pressure when the push. Okay. So if the quality of the push is really nice, we don't have to play so much with the shoulders. If we make some little mistake or if we lose the pressure, sometimes this uh, little shoulders movement can help uh, to compensate and to keep us in the right timing of the movement. So that's quite important. But first idea is to stay quite much as a block, as straight as possible, if it's what you mean, and, uh, and play with this solid mass first. Later on, you can play with different uh, movement of the shoulders or in the hip, but just make small movement to adjust first, OK? Do you keep some contact to Ricardo Lino, Skate Fresh, or Thiago? Yes, I sometimes I write to Ricardo. I would love to make a video with him. I love his channel. It's super cool. I'm so jealous how we play in the ramp. I'm, I'm, I'm really bad in it. And I would love to that he teach me a little bit. I had one time a lesson from uh, Florian Petit Collin. I would love to get much better in this. I'm also uh, following Skate Fresh. Uh, Asha, she's traveling everywhere. She's amazing in, in the way she makes the contact all over the world and so many content. So it's, it's also somebody you have to follow. And Thiago, we speak some time because we would like to make a video together. We didn't get time to get in touch yet, but uh, I really love to make also something with him. The super quality of his video. It's amazing on his skate. It feels like it's uh, so much playful. So I love to, to do something with them. Uh, you can also see there is our other channel uh, with uh, Victor Torup. He do a lot about uh, training also. And Felix Reiner also uh, started channel. Is it possible to do double push during one hour, not in training, but with, between the marathon race? Yeah, you, you can do double push for super long. So for me, it's just getting used to it. Uh, it's a question of training. So it's very possible to do a one hour double push in a marathon. Uh, no problem with this, even more. What is your favorite wheels for marathon and hardness? Uh, at the moment, uh, I like, uh, I skate on the green matter. They are a little bit thin for me, but they are running uh, very good. So uh, Felix told me uh, to uh, to try those ones. I was skating on the blue one because they were, for me, super nice in outside edge because they are a little bit wider. So for the feeling of skating, for making a better double push, I like a lot to skate on the blue matter and uh, but they are rolling maybe a little less than the green one so when there is a lot of straight line I, at the moment i would use the green uh, matter and when there is many turns like in bl for example i think the blue matter would be better also the bond with the red aluminum uh, seems quite good i didn't skate on those uh, for a long time i try one set maybe two, three years ago, but I had problem with the bearing inside a little bit. So I know they correct the program, the problem uh, recently, but I didn't try them uh, in since a long time. So uh, what's next from India? You tell me how to get good push and increase stamina. Uh, to get the good push for me, it's, it's always about how much pressure you can generate to the ground. So be able to push down then to the side. I make a video about this, so I recommend you go check this one again. Increased stamina is a, is a lot of hard work. It's not only, let's say, you're going to train for one year. You, you will not get enough stamina for speed skating if you decide, okay, this year I'm going to train. It's going to take more years. So having uh, the stamina, the good stamina to be able to perform high level in skating, it can take many years. So that's the most advice I can give you. It's, it's a long-term plan to get enough uh, good push quality and stamina in skating. Uh, for example, I, I like to say it took me 17 years to become world champion. So that could be shorter for some other people. But to reach a high level, it's not going to be in just a few weeks or a few minutes. How do you double push going into a strong headwind? Um, actually, it's, it's, when you have a uh, headwind, it's easier to feel the double push. There is the, the it's like the air is is, uh, is holding you easier on the outside edge. 
So I like the feeling and the pressure you have to maintain when you have a strong headwinds. But uh, then I will just force more, create more pressure with strong headwinds. I would create more pressure in the under push. And I will try to maybe use a little more uh, angle with my uh, body weight on the outside. OK. Uh, ideal skater body type. Um, I'm not sure there is any uh, ideal skater body type. I see many. That, that's the cool thing about skating. We can see many different kind of skater. I have seen some skaters who are skinny and two meters high. We see some skaters who are uh, one meter 60 and uh, 55 kilos. They were world champion also. Uh, so there is many different body types that are possible to skate. What's important is that the way you build your technique is adapts to your body type. And the, the way you skate is adapt to your muscle quality. If you're powerful, you can do longer step if you are a more powerful step, if you are shorter guy, uh, you can do more step and play with more draft. So there is many ways. That's the cool thing also in the coaching. So I like to adapt the way I built my technique to the skater, to their to their body type, so and to the muscle uh, quality they have. So everybody can go fast, but it's super hard to know how to build your technique up to this. Do you see? It is necessary to change the harness of the wheels from 17 to 20 or 30 degrees. Um, I don't change the harness of the wheels actually uh, up to the temperature. Uh, you just just change the harness up to the grip you need. So you just want softer wheels if you want more grip, and harder wheels if you want more roll. Um, just in my opinion, I just adapt also. Uh, I like, because I'm a little heavy, I like to have soft wheels so I have a good footprint on the ground. So it gives me better feeling for the pressure. So it could feel like um, I'm, it makes me slower, but actually having a better footprint gives me more stability and better feeling for the grip. So I then can spend less energy in my push so I like to have softer wheels uh, because of this. Which language do you speak? So I speak uh, English. I speak a bit of Spanish. Um, I try to speak German also sometimes. So that's it. Where the double push is applicable in rink? Um, it's not very easy in rink. We have mainly corners, but um, we can play with some little part of the move double push in the straight line, depending on how fast you go. Um, so there is, uh, when you do the double push, you can get more feeling, especially I like the last movement of my last cross in the out of the corner. I like to grab some grab to grab some ground inside uh, to finish my push, and it gives me more speed in the straight line. So this is a little bit of double push movement in my last cross uh, of the out of the corner but it's not really uh, the same. But it's applicable um, in this way. You will, but in the straight line of a rank, like in USA, I don't think you have time to do a double push uh, in this. Hello, Sebastian. Uh, here is South American Championship in Ecuador. A uh, lot of clubs will do the marathon too. Uh, so you can go to, and I'm already going. Yeah, I would love to come in Ecuador. Though. I know Elton is going there sometime and stuff. It's so, so nice. And, um, uh, uh, Thiago is there. We were speaking about him a uh, little before. So yeah, we need to do something together, Thiago. If I have time, I would love to come in Paris this summer. I know you want to travel also. So if you want to come in Toulouse, let me know. That would be so cool to do a video together. The pro and codes using 100 10 millimeters compared to 125 for double push technique. Uh, very cool question. Uh, it took me so long to make this uh, double push video. Uh, first, because it's much harder to get the feeling on 125. So I was not happy with my personal technique on 125 to do the double push. That's why I was not doing this video. It took me more training to get back to a feeling or something that was correct enough to show even 125. So it was a challenge for me to try to do it good uh, 125. Uh, it's it's possible, but my level was not good enough to make it nice. When I do it on 110, I can get a much better double push uh, very fast. 
because it's lower to the ground, there is more, the edge from 110 are much more playful. So it's much, much easier to do double push with 110. And it's even easier on 100 millimeters. And it was super effective and easy on 84 millimeters or 80 millimeter wheels. So for me, it's a big advantage because 110s are rolling less than the 125, you need also, you have more gliding moment that you can use as a double push. Okay, the 125, they glide more and then maintain the speed longer. So you don't really need to have so much double push with 125. You play a lot with your body weight, but little less with a real under push with a real pressure into the ground. So yeah, for me, 110 is, is much better for the double push, I would say. And uh, I think I will soon go back to skate on some 110 uh, this summer, just because I like so much the outside and inside edge feeling and the double push feeling uh, from those wheels. Should skater train upper body? Yes, you have to train your upper body, especially the core, but you have to train your upper body to make sure that it's not moving in every direction and that you can be in, under control. But when you train your upper body, uh, for scaling, you don't want to gain weight, weight. So you don't want to be like super pumped and heavy. If you have, uh, if you gain weight from your upper body, it's gonna cost you much more energy for scaling later. Uh, I like to invite you in Germany for special training with us. How can I do? Uh, yeah, contact me by email, pascalbriand at yahoo.fr. Uh, I will try to see if it's possible with my planning. It's a little crazy, the planning uh, for traveling, but uh, if there is opportunity, uh, I would like, I, uh, maybe we can do something. Uh, what frame for 125 millimeter, if I'm tall, 173, um, only for Martin, obviously, sorry for my English. No, it's good, I understand good, Ruben. Uh, if you are tall, 178, I'm, I'm 183. Uh, I'm using a 13 long frame, 13.0 frame. Uh, the, the, what you want is you want stability. So if you skate many marathons, you can go for 13.2 or 13. Both would be good. If you're going super fast and I know you're fast, I would recommend you use the 13.2 because you will gain some stability. So it's easier for you. So if your English is not so good, I will train Spanish. Pienso que la 13.2 es mejor porque hay más uh, estabilidad para ti. Tú vas uh, muy rápido, eh, so es más fácil patinar en, en 125 con 13.2. I hope you understand this Spanish. For a beginner buying the first pair of speed skate, would you recommend four times 110 or three times 125? Uh, if it's if you're a skater beginner and you want to go on track and road and championship, you have to go on four times 110. If you want to go more for marathon or fitness, I will go on three times 125, uh, no doubt. It's a little harder to get some feeling for the technique, but it's uh, you can skate easily everywhere and uh, it's rolling better. So I would recommend to go 125. And if you don't feel super comfortable at it, you can still put three times 110 at the start to get more feeling on the edge. Why is double push more energy consuming? So yeah, sometimes I say it's uh, energy consuming and sometimes I say it's not. It's just uh, the way you, you can play with a wider range of energy, let's say. Uh, because you use more muscle and more pushing time, you can spend more energy if you want when you go really fast, actually. So to make you faster, you spend more energy because you will use more muscle, but it will make you go faster, actually, uh, or maintain your speed for longer. But then you need a very strong condition. But sometimes it can be also uh, less energy consuming than the classic technique because you can share the energy you spend in a longer time during all the moment. So that's, it's both. It can be super effective and less energy spending, or it can be super consuming if you really want to go super fast. Okay, we have just one minute left because after this, I need to go skate a little bit. I, it was a warm day and I want to skate a little bit before going to Barcelona. So I have one more question, I think. Uh, we Germans should all invite you for a meeting after Berlin. 
uh, in Fleming. Yeah, Fleming Skate is an amazing place to skate. Uh, I went there one time. There's, I think, like 200 kilometers of road where you can skate. I would love to come there again. Uh, I will be in Berlin this year. I'm not sure I can stay long after because I think right after Berlin, I will fly to India for uh, training. So um, nice to have you here, Ruben, uh, on the live. Thanks, everybody, uh, for following the channel. If you have uh, any more questions, if you like the live, please let me know any comments in the video later. Don't forget to tell your friends uh, to subscribe the channel also. I like to reach 10,000 uh, subscribers as soon as possible. I'm soon around uh, 8,000. Uh, I will write my email here in the comments. Here it is. You can always write me this email. Uh, most of the time, well, always I will answer, actually. Uh, thanks for coming to this chat. It's one hour long. I cannot do it longer. I really want to go train again and make my day push a little better. See you soon and maybe see you in Barcelona for the Aurora Games. Bye bye. Thank you. C'est bon?